The One with Gummy and Boulder by Tom 117Z and Skijarama. <sighs> Why? Why do we keep doing this? Because we're idiots? Yeah, I, I know. I know we're idiots. That isn't a valid reason. It's not a valid excuse. Because one is a genius. No! Say, what are we doing today, Boulder? Gummy asked the little rock sitting with him on the counter of Sugar Cube Corner. The same thing we do every day, Gummy, Boulder replied. We are going to... No taking over the world, Maud chastised, giving Boulder a slap over his metaphorical ear. Now, you may be wondering how they reached this point. Boulder and Gummy... Two pets of two inseparable sisters, wanting to conquer the world. How did this happen, you might ask? Well, let us recall. Previously, on that one time where Maud got excited... No, Boulder, you can't take over the world today. Maud deadpanned in her constant voice to the eagerly motionless rock in her pocket. How dare you! I am Boulder! I will hold this world beneath me with the weight of... Maybe next year. Boulder knows no delays! Bad. Boulder shifted inside Maud's pocket, though not of his own will. It was purely because of her body moving around. <sighs> Boulder was furious. Incredibly so. Who was that? A new voice asked, raspy and despondent. Boulder didn't get the chance to reply, as his world of Maud's pocket was suddenly rocked violently, like a hurricane of hoof-sized proportions. Bad boy, Boulder Boulder, Pinky said, poking Maud's chest pocket where Boulder was still. I will enslave you all, Boulder snarled silently. Your name is Boulder? Came the raspy voice again from beyond the veil of fabric. Boulder, if he were physically able, would have pumped out his chest in pride. Yes, I am Boulder the Hard, he declared loudly, to which there was a brief silence. How long have you had to sit in that pocket to come up with that? Longer than I would like to admit. Well, I'm Gummy. Hmm. Sounds like you have ambitions. Gummy commented with interest. I would like to take over the world. Boulder replied as if he were already triumphant and was merely waiting for his trophy to be delivered. Ah, an ambition I can really appreciate. Gummy, don't encourage him! Pinkie Pie suddenly exclaimed from beyond the pocket. Hm. I share the same ambition, you silly pink horse. Gummy snapped violently at Pinky before licking one of his eyes. You'll all bow to me, one. And no, you can't take over the world by yourself either. Honestly, the two of you are quite the mischievous pair. Pinky scalded with a small frown. Boulder decided to tune them out for the time being, his mind wandering and eventually settling on that interloper, Trixie. Seemingly sensing his anger, Gummy blinked in a way that gave Boulder the courage to act out. Maud suddenly leaned down to her pocket, seemingly having felt his aggravation while talking to Pinky. Don't get upset, Boulder. I'll take care of her myself. She whispered emotionlessly to the rock. Gummy flicked his tail. Boulder didn't move. It was settled. Boulder sat patiently, listening in on the conversation before allowing the shifting fabric to move him closer to Maud's chest. Maud, if it is all the same to you, I would like to stay here and play with this Gummy. He seems like a lot of fun. Boulder asked into the mind of his owner with a sort of, uh, innocent-sounding voice. Maud simply reached into her pocket and withdrew him before setting him down on the counter next to Gummy. 
Boulder remembered Gummy now. The two hadn't spoken before, but Boulder had seen Gummy once a few years ago, when Maud first came to this tiny town for several moments. Boulder and Gummy gazed into each other's eyes. When Pinky and Maud left, the toothless alligator was the first to speak. What plans do you normally have for world domination, anyway? Gummy asked. Rock slides. Back in the time after Maud's <clears throat> accident, and, uh, oh yeah, and that thing with Twiggles, too. So, that was then. This is now. Little has changed. Are you sure leaving those two alone is a good idea? Maud asked her sister as the pink mare in question put final touches on a plan for a huge party. Yeah, they'll be fine for a few hours while we set this gig up. Pinky assured her sister. What could they possibly do in that time? They want to take over the world. So did Princess Luna, and now she's our friend. I don't think it's quite the same. It'll be fine, Pinkie Pie assured once again, completely and utterly confident in her assertion. Maud was less sure, but went with it. Fine. What is this party about, anyway? Well, there is the movie coming out soon, so there's a lot to celebrate. Good point. I hope I make a cameo. What are they talking about? Gummy asked curiously. I stopped trying to figure it out several seasons ago. There was silence for a few moments after that, Gummy completely unmoving and yet eyeing Boulder with a perplexed expression that didn't actually materialize on his face. You've spent far too long around these two ponies, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. And so have you. As they noticed Maud and Pinky both leaving Sugarcube Corner to set up the party, they knew it was time to commence Operation World takeover -er. That's still not a word, Boulder deadpanned. But what is a word? Isn't it just- Don't start with that philosophical rubbish you do. We have a world to conquer. Gummy twitched his tail slightly in annoyance at being silenced. All the same, Boulder was right. They had a job to do. Right. What was the plan again? You forgot? I have a lot on my mind. Give me a break. <sighs> Clear your head, then. We can't have any distractions here. Right. Okay. Clear my head. Make my thoughts like the void that is our reality. Oh, for the love of... You should try philosophy sometime. It might make you realize... Shut up! Gummy drooped without even moving. Okay. Boulder shifted slightly on the table, the equivalent of an alicorn blasting a mountain to pieces to let off some steam. <sighs> All right. I'm calm now. So, uh, that plan? Ah, yes. You see. And so the plan was explained for a good 30 minutes. Well, maybe add an additional ten to that. But still, it was explained. In essence, do you know of the giant mine system within the mountain upon which Canterlot sits? Well, recent geological surveys have revealed that there may be more long tunnels leading all the way from the cave system to the very one where Maud had <clears throat> set up shop, as it were. All they had to do was find where the tunnels intersected, though they might need to break down a wall or four between the two tunnels. That was where Boulder came in. So, that's the plan? Gummy asked for confirmation. Yes, and once in Canterlot we take the throne and demand the surrender of Princess Celestia. What about Princess Luna? She doesn't even have her own throne, so who cares? Boulder spat with contempt. A leader without a throne. The very nerve. <laughs> if only he knew the things that Pinkie Pie did. Sounds perfect, Gummy agreed. This couldn't possibly fail. I know, 
Boulder responded, glee present in the voice very few could actually hear. Let's go. They didn't move. Several more moments passed, and they still hadn't gone anywhere. Um, after you? Gummy said. Uh, no, after you. You're the boss here, after you. No, I can't. You can't? I'm a rock, all right! Boulder raged, holding complete and utter disdain for his unfortunate situation. Pick me up, you philosophical scaly twit! Ouch! No need for such language. What language?! And so their completely perfect and completely foolproof plan to take over the world began. Once they managed to get off the counter, anyway. Eh. And then opened a door far larger than they were. Thanks Celestia, or whatever rock version exists, for Gummy's excellent jumping capacity. It's slimy in here. Boulder remarked idly while Gummy slowly slapped his way towards Maud's house's entrance, occasionally receiving directions from the rock in his mouth. The wooded area around them slowly thinned out, a mailbox coming into view not far ahead. It's my mouth. It's had many a visitor, and none have been rocks before. Gummy replied as he came to a stop in front of the downward slope. He slowly licked one of his eyes while contemplating how to proceed. Hold on to something in there. Things are about to get bumpy. What am I supposed to hold on with? I'm a rock! Ground yourself, Gummy suggested before taking a slow step into the home of Maud Pie. The sandstone under his foot crumbled, and he lost his footing. He rolled down the slope, his body sounding oddly like a wet sack of strawberries with every impact on the way down. In his mouth, Boulder was screaming in alarm, probably because he was now lodged inside of Gummy's sinuses. Finally, Gummy came to a rest, lying upon his back, staring into the ceiling, and trying to use his breath to force Boulder back onto his tongue so that his nostrils weren't clogged. Boogers! Snot! Make it stop! Boulder wailed. With a blink, Gummy sneezed, and Boulder flopped out of the carrier's nose and thumped against his scaly chest. <sighs> Thank you. Any time, Gummy replied before sluggishly rolling back over and taking Boulder back into his mouth. Okay, I need to know where I'm going. I see the furniture up ahead, so which one should I look for, and where do I go when I find it? Find the bed and face the waterfall. Then turn right and head down onto the small, grassy, and mossy platform below. Follow that platform and the path connected to it until you are on the opposite side of the chamber from the furniture. Then spit me at the wall to your right. If we're in the right area... We should be able to narrow down the spot by doing that a few times, Boulder explained. Got it. For a short while, Gummy slowly strolled up to the bed and then followed Boulder's instructions like gospel truth. At last, after what felt like almost half an hour, he stood at the other end of the chamber and faced the wall. Boulder quivered in disgust as he was maneuvered by the tongue and covered in saliva. Then, Gummy shot him at the wall. <laughs> Boulder collided with the wall and left a notably large dent. Cracks spread out from the point of impact, taking a shape not unlike that of a spiderweb. To their left, where the cracks moved further along the wall than the right, a few small pieces of the wall fell straight out, revealing a hollow space beyond. There, shoot me at that section of the wall! Boulder ordered excitedly, and Gummy wasted no time in scooping Boulder up once more and spitting him at the disruptive surface. <laughs> Boulder crashed into it, and the wall came falling down, revealing a cavernous passage, slowly going up in altitude 
and lined with dark blue gems jutting from the walls like spears. Good. We have our entrance. Gummy said happily before starting forward. Boulder, where are you? Here. Where? Here, you dodo! That isn't exactly a helpful statement. There's a lot of rocks here. It was then that the two realized a small but important flaw in their plan. Boulder was a rock. The wall he had just broken down was also made of rocks. He was now surrounded by and buried in rocks. The rescue operation took the better part of an hour. After only several more hours of climbing through dark caverns with only the faint glows of various gems, some magical, did Boulder and Gummy finally make it to the cavern beneath Canterlot. On arrival, they swore they spotted a bouquet and a little bit of dried blood as if several ponies had fought to near death over it. But they thought nothing of it. Of course, they immediately got lost in those caverns. That was the whole reason Queen Chrysalis imprisoned two others down there after all. They, in all their brilliant glory, had utterly failed to even remotely consider that fact. Eh, too bad for them. So, several more hours were wasted trying to figure out where in Equestria they were, and if that place was even still under Canterlot. However, their questions were answered when they somehow found themselves in a sewer. They weren't even sure how that happened, uh, but they did somehow blunder their way into it. After that, it was but a question of following the flow of sewage to see where it was coming from, and then find a suitable drain which Gummy could hop up to, while Boulder hung on for dear life. Of course, it wasn't really their fault that they emerged in the mayor's shower room within Canterlot Castle. <laughs> Sewer monster! Run! One startled maid screamed as Gummy's head popped out of the drain, the grate flying through the air and landing with a clatter. The various mares promptly ran for their lives, many still with soaking wet coats from the showers, and <laughs> causing the blush of many stallions and mares alike in the hallways beyond. The troublesome duo had to note that fact was odd, especially considering most ponies never wore clothes. Well, we're here, I think, Gummy noted. What do we do now? Need you even ask? Boulder asked with a sinister chuckle. <laughs> we complete phase one and take the throne while forcing the surrender of Princess Celestia. And then what? Huh? Well, oh, I mean, what was phase two? There was a moment of silence. You don't even know, do you? I, uh didn't think that far ahead. So, uh, we improvise. Yes! Boulder declared as if it was his idea. It was my plan to improvise a plan. Genius, correct? Not really. Of course it is. Now come, minion. The world awaits its new dominion. Gummy just mentally sighed considered the philosophical implications of what a plan really even was, and then continued to carry Boulder through the halls of the castle. Just as they were leaving, however, they spotted a large number of guards running towards them, with the mares they had frightened earlier following shortly behind. Boulder let out a rather... eh... bad swear, in sheer frustration, that shall not be stated to protect virgin ears. While this was happening, Gummy looked around and spotted a food cart being wheeled along by a stallion in a suit with the cloth on top covering the lower compartment. Seeing the opportunity, Gummy immediately hopped onto the cart and beneath the cover, shielding them from the view of the guards as they rushed by, all heroically into the shower, only to find nothing but a busted drain. <sighs> you do know that this method is incredibly cliched. Boulder deadpanned. That's just another word for tried and true. Stop complaining. Never. 
The cart continued a little ways, with Boulder and Gummy remaining completely still, which was easy considering it's their natural state, and remaining incognito until they spotted an opportune time to make a run for it. They never had to, however, as when the cart stopped outside a rather large pair of doors, the pony in the suit said something interesting to the guards by that door. Halt, one of the guards stated. State your business. Court isn't due to start again for another half hour. Oh, this isn't for court, the pony replied. Or, well, it kinda is. It's Princess Celestia's daily serving of cake to prepare herself for further royal activities. Oh, I see. The guard stated while letting his guard down, indicating that this was very much a normal thing. What is it this time? Chocolate and toffee, the butler responded. Where does she put it all? One of the guards asked. How can she eat so much cake and yet remain so hot? Was that a pun? The other guard asked. No? The butler seemed impatient. Excuse me, but can I please just do my job now? Uh, of course, sir. The guard of puns quickly responded. Go right in. Is this the throne room? Boulder asked hopefully. I believe so. Ha <laughs> ha! Boulder declared victoriously. I told you my plan was perfect. This was part of your plan? Most definitely. Now never question me again. Gummy licked his eyeball in slight frustration, but the end was in sight. The butler wheeled the card into the throne room and left it near the throne itself. The butler then left it there and exited, the vast doors closing behind him. This left the cart, the duo of ultimate evil, and a completely empty throne room. Gummy hopped off the cart, boulder held in his mouth. He moved slowly until he was directly in front of the throne, both looking at it with completely emotionless eyes, and no eyes if you happen to be a rock, that hid such unparalleled awe. We... we did it, Boulder stated. We actually did it! Wait, you weren't sure we could? Gummy inquired with worry. It was your plan. No, I mean, of course I did, and here we are! Boulder quickly covered for himself. Now, let us deposit our bosoms onto the throne at once. Isn't that an old-timey word for a mare's, uh, well, you know? It's not for bottom? No. Oh. Uh, forget that, forget that, just put us on the damn thing! Gummy did as asked, and soon, the alligator and the rock were resting comfortably on the red cushion. <laughs> wow, I didn't think it would be this comfortable, Gummy noted. Why isn't my basket made of this material? Pinkie Pie, you and I will have some serious words when I get home. Forget that pink fool. We no longer need her or any more of them. But I like Pinkie. Quiet, you fool! Boulder shouted. The final phase of the first phase begins now. And here comes the Alicorn herself, I believe. He was proven correct when the throne room doors opened to reveal two bowing guards and the large, regal figure of Princess Celestia walking gracefully through the doorway. She immediately spotted her cake as the doors closed, her eyes glinting with joy. Then she noticed a small green lizard and a rock on the throne and thought, what the heck? Behold, former Princess Celestia, Boulder declared in his mightiest voice. Your throne is now mine, and your only course of action is immediate surrender. Celestia tilted her head. Of course, she couldn't hear a word Boulder was saying, and was honestly just curious as to why a rock and a small green alligator were in her seat. Your kingdom is mine, your ponies are mine, and your fools shall be mine! Uh, what? Gummy questioned. Huh? What? 
Dude, do you have a crush on Princess Celestia? What? No! Was this what this was all about? Shut up, you fool! God, you have got to be kidding me. A rock can dream, damn it! Princess Celestia couldn't help but feel like she had seen that alligator before, and it hit her just at the same time something pink and excitable did. <laughs> oh, there you two are! Pinky shouted, at that point in a pile of entangled limbs was a very confused Celestia. We've been looking all over for you, and our special senses told us you were either trying to take over the world, or Boulder was trying to seduce the princess. Uh, though I'm not sure which one, they're pretty simpler body spasms. I, uh, I don't... What? Celestia asked, completely baffled. Back! Boulder screamed. I refuse to be foiled by you! Then what about me? Maud said in an angry deadpan as she also entered the room. Bad, Boulder. Bad. You do not control me, woman! I'm tears now! Boulder, let it go, Gummy gently stated. What is happening? Celestia asked once more, and once more, her questions went unanswered. Come on. Let's get you home and have a long talk about the proper way to treat your mare. Maud stated as she picked Boulder up and put him in her pocket. What? Celestia exclaimed one more time. You too, Gummy, come on, Pinky said cheerfully, the alligator happily listening to his owner and hopping into her mane. Sorry for the interruption, Maud said to the Princess of the Sun. You may continue with your day now. And with that, the two mares left the throne room with their respective pets in tow. Celestia, I'll come back for you! Boulder cried out as he was taken away. And all the while, Princess Celestia sat on the floor without the faintest idea of what in all of Equestria just happened. Of course, then she remembered. It was a Saturday, and then it all made perfect sense. Uh, kinda. Dude, that was a weird plot twist there. Ah, uh, the birth of a ship is a glorious thing. I mean, I would say, no, Tom, bad, but frankly, at this point, I can't even be mad. And the other is insane. Ah, uh, of course.